Hello everybody, this is Starman and welcome back to Let's Play Fallout 2. Well, we're here at Vault 13, or rather the uh, cave that contains Vault 13. And there are not a ton of rats or scorpions or stuff waiting to get us, which clearly means that there must be something very dangerous waiting to kill us inside the vault. So. Yeah, so many fun memories. This is where we killed the Overseer. And we have just gained 2,000 XP for finding Vault 13 and gone up a level. So let's go ahead and resolve that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and bump up my speech to 100. And I'll go ahead and spend the rest of the points on Doctor which will put it at just under 100. And level 13 for Vault 13. <laughs> That's a happy coincidence. Oh, and because we know it's here, the hidden locker, which is empty because somebody else thought of looting it too. All right, so we'll just go ahead and open the security door. Looks like there's a doctor right there, and oh my god, there's death claws! who are not immediately attacking us. You see large death claw. The creature is composed of rippling muscle, sharp teeth, and claws. And we have the option to talk to this death claw. Do not fear me, human. I do not intend to harm you. I am Grufar, leader of this death claw pack. Why have you come here? Eh, let's see, kick your ass? No. How is it possible a death claw can talk and so well? I want to know what happened to the people who once lived here. I'm looking for something called the Gek. I was told I could find one here. I think I'll be leaving now. Let's go with the obvious question. They are gone, human. We did not kill them and take their home. It is not our way to kill. I understand that you may not believe me, but I hope you will judge me by my actions toward you and not out of fear or prejudice. Hey, maybe now can kick your ass? You seem to be an honorable being, Grufar. Why have you come here? Yeah, let's not question the whole talking thing just yet. Uh, looking for a gek. Mm, a gek? Is that not a small lit... No, wait, that is a gecko. I'm sorry, but I do not know what a gek is, nor where it can be found. Let's see, hey, this was, was funny. That relative of yours? It's obvious that talking is a waste of time. To be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what it is myself. Would it be alright with you if I looked for it? Would you let me in to look for it? I am sorry, but I do not just allow anyone to wander these halls. I am responsible for the safety of all who live here, and I must exercise caution. Then, look, it's not like you own the place. Maybe I'll come around whether you like it or not. Or, I understand I'll respect you for privacy. And, I understand your concern. You don't know me well enough to trust me. What if I could help you out somehow, and I, you in return you allow me to look around? Grufar stares at you intently for a moment. You will be interested in helping us? Yes, I sense little evil in you. Very well. I shall place my trust in you. Hey, the dude's a paladin. He can cast Detect Evil. Thank you. There are many machines here. Machines built by humans. Deaf Claw Hands cannot use these machines. However, there is one machine that understands questions. I ask it to run the other machines, and it obeys. This machine no longer listens. It will no longer run the other machines. We are running out of food and water. I have ordered raids on the human land so that we may survive. I am not proud of this, and I am putting an end to it. If you repair this machine, I will be able to feed my people again. I will gladly stop the raids. Will you agree to this? Well, I'm no tech, but I can give it a try. i uh, change my thing with this more. I'll do what I can. Thank you. The machine is in the vault control center on the third level. If you can repair it, please do so. I am placing my trust in you. Please do not betray it. You are welcome here. I won't let you down. You have my word. All right. As long as we're here, we might as well go ahead and talk to everybody. Hello, I'm Joseph the Herbalist. What can I help you with? Just wanted to ask some questions. What would you like to know? Are you a prisoner here? No, I'm not a prisoner. I stay because I'm needed here. I've learned to accept the fact that some of my patients are death claws. That's very commendable of you. Can you leave here if you want? Yes, I can and often do. I have to go collect my herbs from time to time. I've never once been stopped. 
I used to wonder if the Death Claws were secretly following me or whether they would not they would stop me if I tried to leave, so one day I put the theory to the test. I traveled to Nevertown and stayed there a week or so before returning. When I got back, I was warmly welcomed. Grufar, the pack leader, came to me privately and personally thanked me for coming back. No, I'm definitely here because I want to be. All right. Uh, what can you tell me about the Death Claws? Well, let's see. Death Claws appear to be mutated Jackson's chameleons, the horn variety. There are a lot of similarities still present, but an even greater number of differences. The mutation factor is quite high. This species is highly intelligent, about the equivalent of an eight-year-old, with some individuals reaching normal human level. Their learning capacity is very high, and they're capable of abstract thought and reasoning. Although they do not have vocal cords, the Death Claws seem to mimic human speech much the same as a parrot does. I have yet to discover the exact mechanism behind this, so I'm unable to say more at this time. Socially... They are pack animals with a very rigid code of ethics. They are led by an alpha male who rules with the mutual consent of the pack. They appear to be extremely loyal to the pack as a whole, treating it as a family unit rather than having individual families as humans do. Their sense of right and wrong is very well defined. They do follow a code of ethics that is enforced by the pack as a whole. Violence has never used a solution to a problem among the pack as far as I can see. <coughs> Pardon me. There are capital crimes committed here, so I can't say how these are handled. Hmm. That's something to think about for now. I hope this helps you. I'm impressed by your knowledge. Uh, how do you come to be here? I was gathering some herbs one night when a voice called to me in the darkness. I've been watching you, it said. And I know that you are a healer. Are you dedicated enough to art to heal someone foreign to you? Someone whom many would consider an enemy? I answered that I respected all life and knew my best to heal the injured regardless of who or what they were. I thought it was some fee for Raider who had gotten himself hurt and needed a doctor. You can't begin to imagine my surprise when a couple of Death Claws stepped out of the night with an injured companion. Some of you shunned up really good. I told them I couldn't work on where we were, so they blindfolded me and brought me here. I've been here from that day forward. You truly are a dedicated man who deserves recognition. What would you like to know? Well, thanks for the information. I'll be going now. Okay, so we can go down... Yeah, let's go ahead and try second floor. Hello, human. Sorry to bother you, but who are you? I, Dar, warrior. I, Matt Dar. What do you want? What is your job at the vault? Dar, guard hall, keep peace, nothing more. Well, you're doing just fine, Dar. Keep it up. What do you want? Eh, just passing the time. And, uh-oh. You see a lean man long robes. He appears to be deep in thought. And he's wearing a very familiar looking purple robe. Welcome, Traveler. I am called Gordon. I am the Shrine Keeper. What can I help you with? It's a pleasure to meet you, Gordon. I'm Matt. Can I ask you some questions? Certainly may. Uh, who is the Shrine dedicated to? This shrine is dedicated to an unknown hero known only as the Vault Dweller. He or she was the savior of all who lived here several decades ago. We do not know what became of our savior, but he or she lives on in our mind. And I see. I have other questions. Uh, how long have you been here? I have lived all my life in this vault. I've been a shrine keeper for most of those years. That's a long time. Can you answer more questions? What well, can you tell me about the Death Claws? I have lived with the Death Claw for several months now. They seem to be honorable and fortright in their dealings with me and the other humans who live here. I trust them in time and think you will as well. And yep, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Why do you stay here? My place is here at the shrine. I will not leave it willingly. Dedication is admirable. Thank you, Gordon. Yeah, I think it I think you'll let me mention, you know, hey, the vault dweller. I, I'm his grandson, I'm the chosen one. Is there something I can help you, a stranger? Yeah, I'd like to ask some questions. What do you want? Uh who are you? My name is Matt. Does it matter? Hey, my name's Matt, too. Okay, I'll just leave. Oh, I didn't see you standing there. That's okay. We all space out of time. Say you look rather down. May I ask why? I was born two months premature. When I was one, I was dropped on the porch. When I was two, I had pneumonia. When I was three, I got the chicken pox. When I was four, I fell on the stairs and broke six ribs. 
When I was five, my uncle was decapitated by a watermelon. When I was six, my parents hit me in the head with a shovel. When I was seven, I lost my index finger to my pet rat. When I was eight, my dog Spike got hit by a tractor. When I was nine, my mother lost her arm to a rabid Brahmin. When I was ten, my sister was torn to bits by a pack of dogs. When I was eleven, my grandfather killed himself because I was ugly. When I was twelve, my grandmother killed herself because I was ugly. When I was thirteen, my father poked out his eyes with a pitchfork in a drunken stupor. When I was fourteen, my brother lost his hand to a ball of bee. When I was fifteen, my aunt choked to death on a chicken bone. When I was 16, I lost my cousin to a badger. When I was 17, I cut off my big toe of a hoe. When I was 18, my father lost his right leg to the tractor that killed my dog. When I was 19, wow, I'm sure glad I'm not you. Okay, I get the picture of what's currently bothering you. I'm truly sorry that you have had so much pain in your life. Hopefully things have gotten better. Well, there I was traveling through the desert when in, suddenly my Brahmin falls over dead. And then I realized I was low in water and had a drink in quite a while. Luckily, my bone, later my bones began to ache. My head started to hurt. My bowels became loose. I got this rash that just wouldn't go away. It was time to sit down and die. Well, I was sitting there in the desert waiting for the world to swallow my miserable existence when a pack of deathclaws showed up. Well, I'm thinking to myself, this is it. Now I can die. I can wind up as a pile of deathclaws shit in the middle of the desert. But no, fate had yet another cruel card to play against me. You see, the deathclaws didn't kill me. Instead, they gave me water, brought me here, gave me this room, gave me food, cleaned me up, and now they won't let me leave. I know they're fattening me up for some unhorrible known, unknown fate. I keep telling them it probably taste better if I was leaner, but it does no good. They just smile if you can call it that and pat me on the head and say, Don't worry, human. Things will get better. Ha! <laughs> we both know what that means. Anyway, to make matters worse, they started giving me some sort of medication. It was making me gassy, so I stopped taking it. It's a good thing I did. I think it was some sort of mind control pill because I started to feel like things weren't actually as bad as I thought. Anyway, that's about it. I'm just waiting for the dinner bell to chime so they can feast on my bloated body. Please tell me you don't have any children. No, when I turned 22, they got this strange fungus that started to grow on my testes. Stop! Don't want to know. <sighs> okay, so apparently the uh, Death Claws diagnosed this guy as majorly depressive, and uh, they, uh, they they done uh, started treating him. Well, that's all we've got here on the second floor, except for Matt, who really is not worth messing with. Meow, meow, I'm a cat, and I have special powers only cats have. What are you? I'm the person that's going to kick your ass if you don't stop this cat nonsense and tell me your name. I'm just a normal person who's quite impressed with your special nature. Can you tell me your name? I'm Sandy. I'm not really a cat. I just like to play. I see. Can I ask you some questions? What do you want to ask? Do you like it here? I guess. I miss not having our kids to play, but my mom says that'll change someday. She thinks our kids will come to live here. Until they do, I like to play with Valdis. He's funny. He gives me piggyback ranks. Mom says I should leave all this alone. He's busy, doesn't have time to play, but he always plays me with me when I ask him. I just don't tell Mom about it anymore. That's nice. Are you safe here? Yeah, Mommy takes care of me, and Valdis won't let anybody hurt me. I'm safe here. Oh, good, I'll be leaving then, and we'll then talk to Mom. Hello, I'm Ariel. I don't think I've seen you before. Who are you? Hey, Ariel, my name is Matt. Yes, I'm new here. It's a pleasure to meet you. What can I help you with? Well, let the... Yeah, let's go with the... I'm sorry to intrude on your solitude, but could you answer some questions? All right. Are you a prisoner here? No, I can leave any time I want. The death clause has made that clear to me. They don't let anyone here against their will, as far as I know. I see. If you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few other things. Are you treated all right by the death clause? Yes, they provide me with food, water, shelter, and protection. I feel very safe here. That's more than I can ask for. All right. Need to ask some more? <clears throat> Would you like to leave the vault? I've considered it, but I would have to say no. I feel safer here than anywhere else I've ever lived. I do get lonely for the company of other people like myself, but hopefully others will come here in the future and satisfy that need. Well, I must trouble you for you, sir, some more. So, why are you so sad, Ariel? My husband recently died. I miss him. I'm having problems adjusting, that's all. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. How did that happen? My husband and I were traveling with a caravan on its way to the New California Republic. We wanted to start a new life for ourselves and our daughter, Sandy. Unfortunately, the caravan was attacked by raiders one night. They were incredibly brutal. They killed everyone, men, women, and children. Rand, my husband, died trying to defend Sandy and me. We were to die when a next when a miracle occurred. I was holding Sandy behind me, trying to keep her from the monster that had shot Rand. He stood next to my husband's body and laughed at me as he aimed his gun at my head. Suddenly, this huge claw came out of the darkness, grabbed him from behind, and, well, thank goodness that Sandy didn't see what happened next. 
Anyway, the Raiders were being wiped out by this group of Deathclaws. The one that saved me and Sandy stood near us and talked to me. He kept reassuring me that I was safe, and that he was sorry that he had, couldn't have gotten there sooner to help us. Afterwards, the Deathclaws brought us here. Wow, what a story, Mark! And I must be going now. Okay, so in case it isn't completely clear at this point, uh, the Deathclaws here are good people. Even if they're not technically people, and young woman in metal armor. Well, I'll be. How you doing, Matt? I hope everything worked out for you at the squat. Dahlia, thanks to you, things worked out great. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. It was my pleasure to do what I could for you. So I can help you with... Uh, got some questions. What do you want to know? Are you a prisoner here? No, I'm not. I'm here with my own free will and I like it. I think that will be a safe place to stay for a while. Alright. Can you leave anytime you want? Yeah, that's why I'm free to go or stay. I'm staying for now. Okay. What can you tell me about the death clause? I don't know any more about them than you do, I guess. I'm still trying to get used to them talking instead of tearing my head off using it for a golf ball. It's scary, you know. No, I've come to accept it. How did you come to be here? After I left the squad, I didn't know what to do with myself. I figured I'd just drift into another town and another hired gun job. So I was wandering the desert trying to decide exactly where I should go. But one day I was looking for a good place to camp. It was getting late. I didn't want to be out in the open after dark. Off in the distance, I lay as I thought I saw a campfire, so I see what was there. So I sneak about this campsite, and there are these two Deathclaws sitting around the fire, just chatting away. Idiot that I am, I let out a little cry of surprise, jumped up, and turned to run, right into the arms of another Deathclaw standing right behind me. Anyway, to make a long story short, it took a while for me to realize I wasn't about to be put on a spit and barbecued. Instead, I was brought here and interviewed by Grufar. Now I can live here if I want. Well, that's interesting. Why are you so worried about needing a place of safety? When I let you buy me in the squad, I broke my contract with my employer. I was sure that I'd be hunted down and killed because of it. Seeing you here convinces me that I don't have to worry about that. I can only assume that my previous employer is no longer in any condition to be concerned about my whereabouts. Yep, you're safe, doggy. You don't need to worry about any retribution. Thanks, Matt. That's a load off my mind. You're welcome. And I'll talk to you later. Alright, so let's go talk to this Steph Claw. Greetings, human. Hello, who are you? I am called Valdus, and you are... Glad to meet you. I'm Matt. How may I serve you? What's your job? I am currently guarding this area of the vault against any unauthorized personnel. I see. How may I serve you? No offense to your fellow Death Claws, but you sound more educated, shall we say? Yes, we are quite diverse in our levels of education. I'm doing my best to continue mine in my spare time. You're... That's an excellent goal. Keep it up. How may I serve you? Uh, just passing the time. Okay, well, we'll see if this will actually let us in here. Stop! You may not go here. This place is off limits. Uh, what is this place? This hatchery. Pack mover inside. Eggs inside. I guard. All of pack guard. Who are you? I jewel. Pack warrior. I guard hatchery. I gall mover. Guarding the mover is a position of great responsibility. You must be an important pack member. You think so? I'm not looking at it that way. That makes me feel good. I like. Thank you. You're welcome. I have to go now. And, yeah, I guess we could try talking to Pack Mother, but not really a need for it. And, hey, there's a human next to the computer that we probably need to go look at. Oh, hi there. I'm Jim or Jimmy. What's you up to? Hi, Jim. I'm Matt. Can I ask you some questions? What would you like to know? Well, what do you do here? Well, we're having some computer problems. I'm looking into it. Unfortunately, my forte is software, not hardware. Yeah, Screwfire mentioned this to me and asked me to take a look. Do you mind? You can't make matters worse than they already are. Go right ahead. All right, but I need to ask a few things first. What's all this machinery for? This is a mainframe computer system and related support devices. From here, all the functions of the vault are remotely controlled. Ah, I see. Isn't this the vault overseer room? Normally, the vault overseer would be stationed here, but Vault 13 has been fully automated. Uh, why? Isn't that unusual? I don't know the full story, but at one point in the vault's history, there was a rebellion. The overseer was either killed or overthrown. I'm not sure which. Uh, killed. Definitely killed. Anyway, the leaders of the revolution didn't want to entrust the fate of the people to another overseer, so they installed this mainframe. The records say it was purchased from... Uh, what was that name? Ah, Brotherhood of Steel. Can you tell me anything about the Brotherhood? No, I'm sorry. I don't have any information on them. This all happened ages and ages ago, and I never found any references to them other than this one. However, it's my understanding that the Brotherhood is a military outfit, and there are some ruins of what appears to be a military base west of here. That may be all that's left of them. Alright, let me ask you some other things. What would you like to know? 
What do you think about the death claws? Well, in some ways I admire them for what they are and what they're trying to become. In other ways, they scare the hell out of me. I don't think I'll ever get used to the fact that they're just as smart as I am. Well, some of them are that smart. Do you think they're a threat to human society? Oh, absolutely. They're far superior to us physically and they're our equals mentally. That makes them a pretty big threat. However, it all comes down to the morals and ethics in the end. Fortunately, they seem to be ethical and morally well-developed. I yeah, see what you mean. Are you here because you want to be? Oh, yeah, I've liked to hear since I stumbled across the place, and I really don't want to leave. I've always been a loner and don't really care much for people. No offense intended. None taken. And I think I'll be going now. All right, so let's see if I can repair. I said repair. Oh, Vic's going to take care of it. You examine the computer terminal, but cannot find anything obviously wrong with it. What do you do? Hit it in a special way. Kick it in a special spot. Run the diagnostic. You are certain the system should have a set of diagnostic routines available. However, the keyboard input seems to have been disabled. The unit accepts voice commands only. What do you do? The only thing left is to look inside. Peering into the massive cables and circuit boards, you find that the system has been deliberately sabotaged. One of the circuit boards, the voice recognition module, is beyond repair and must be replaced. Now all you need to do is find a replacement module. The computer needs a part. Do you know where I might be able to get it? Well, let's see. I suppose the best place would be Vault City, since it's the most modern place I can think of. You might want to give New Reno a try, though. They're closer, and they don't do a lot of trading with Vault City. Thanks. So, yes, we have another fetch quest, but before we try and head back to Vault City and see what we can find, we do have one other thing we need to get. Locked. No trust in this place. Let's see, combat shotgun shells, water chip, never set of combat armor, well... And I am at maximum capacity, well, now I'm going to use that combat knife, or the desert eagle, or most of this to be fair, plus I'm just getting this to trade it to my buddy. Okay, yeah, I can't carry the metal armor. Well, we'll mess around with that later. And, you know, it's been all since we've asked Sulik what the spirits think. Spirits be willing to talk. Taken. All taken. What you be need. Spirits be willing to talk. The spirits see the same swallowing cloud heading to your home. What you be need. Yeah, that's not ominous at all. And let's see, grenades, explosives. And boom shakalaka. We get 4,000 XP for finding the Gek. And I don't feel the need to raid through the rest of the stuff here because... Yeah, they're good folk, and I'm at maximum capacity for carrying stuff right now anyway. Hello, Matt. Have you examined the machine? I'm sorry, Groofar. The voice module has gone bad. I'll have to go get one. I do not understand the workings of such things, but I trust you, Matt. I will await your return. I shall return. You have my word. Okay, so... 
first things first, we swing back by Arroyo. And then we will head to Vault City and circle back around. Chosen. Chosen. Do you hear me? The village dies. All of our futures die too. We have little left in both time and essence. Hurry. Hurry. No pressure though. Okay, I have no idea where the heck I am on the uh, the map here. I think that just uh, glitched and wouldn't load properly for some reason. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I just said for Arroyo. And looks like we encountered a caravan, but uh, occurs to me that this is a good place to stop for now and get that X thing off of our cursor. Okay, yeah, put the weapons away, and uh, next time we will see what we can do with the caravan here and keep making our way back home to deliver the Gek. See you next time.